Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Aiden, from Cartoon Apocalypse, and welcome back to Turn Tuesday. Now, this stream wasn't actually the best stream, because I had no idea what we, what really we were going to do. I mean, I knew that we were going to be doing world building, but I didn't really know what to go off of, so it's just kind of all over the place. But as always, I took the most important things from that stream and put them into this video, and time codes to everything will be down in the comments below, as always. Here's your reminder to go join the Discord. Now we actually couldn't do too many world building stuff because that's really hard to do on a stream. So basically, if you want to be incorporated in the world building, you got to get a Discord and you got to join the server because really there's no other way to do it because you just can't do it on the stream. It just doesn't work out very well. And as far as what we're going to be doing next week, we are going to be developing Xavier's character. So if you have any Xavier fan art, go ahead and send it in either in the Discord, that's the best place, or send me an email, email, uh, it should be down in the description. But yeah, let's just go ahead and hop right into this. This first section is me discussing a cool idea for floating islands as the base world. So basically, people were talking about what if we did a floating island? And the floating islands was an idea that was thrown on in, in the Discord, which I, I was at first like, eh, well, I don't know. But then it kind of stuck to me and I kind of liked it. So, I'm sort of thinking, maybe we do do some sort of floating islands. Because that, it just sounds cool. Something like this. Or, like this. You know, or, okay, here's the thing, right? If you're in the middle of a city, I don't really want you to realize that you're on a floating island. It's more of like if you're at the edge. So basically, the floating islands would be like super big. But then there would be some things that are, some floating islands that are smaller and that you could see out, and then like there'd be bridges between the two islands and stuff. So it's like if you're in the middle of the main town, you're not gonna be able to just like see the edge. It's gonna be like a normal town type of setting. But then if you go out adventuring, then you'll realize, oh, hey, we're actually on a big floating island. So like, for example, if you're in, in this uh, Coliseum here, you're not gonna be able to tell that this is a floating island. It's only when you get over here that you can tell. So, Okay, what happens if you fall off? That's the that's the big part here. And so that's sort of what we need to talk about. First of all, I don't like the idea of just random floating islands. And the original reason why I was like, well, this isn't going to work is because I want this show to be based off of logic and things that make sense. I, it, I say that, but there's magic. So I want everything to be able to to be explained. I don't want there to just be like, oh, this is a thing because I don't know, I just want it to be a thing. So I was thinking, well, what if it's just like a, what if it's like Earth, right? You know how we have a lot of oceans? What if it's just a full ocean world, except the floating islands are on top of it? So it's like they're floating above the ocean. I couldn't find an image to represent that very well, but that's sort of like, hmm, I don't know, like this sort of, this is a pretty good example. It's like, this is the world, just imagine this as a sphere, and then these are the islands above it. And uh, clouds, okay, so a lot of these feature clouds, like this one for example. So I'm thinking there's clouds, so when you're up on top of the islands, you don't realize that there's anything below it, it just looks like clouds. And obviously if you fall down, you're kind of dead. So nobody falls off. <laughs> and so that's sort of um, what you do for that, I think. So you can't, when you look down, all you see is clouds. You don't see the water there. So this next segment is going to be me discussing how the floating islands work. We're just brainstorming through this. And I have a little diagram, so it's pretty easy to understand, I think. We got our floating islands all across the earth, you know. Stuff like this, this is the floating island world. Uh, except for this is Luna's world, so it's just a big ball of water. Okay, that's sort of what we're going with. These are the worlds, or these are like, this is where Luna would live. So for example, if we just draw a little stick person in on here. Oh, we got Luna. Okay, so this is Luna, and this is the world that, this is like her island. And then, I don't know, maybe there's like kings and stuff, I don't know. This is just water at this point. All water. That's sort of what we're going with. 
Does this make sense? It looks like a virus. Come on. Come on, guys. What would the transportation be from island to island? Well, that also brings up a question on how magic would work. Um, and Or if there would just be like a bridge. Like a bridge. Whoa. You know. In some islands, if they were close enough together, they would have bridges. Will it have ice? Well, I don't know. I'm just brainstorming. If there's a magic core, right, that explains that. But there, I guess there would just you just have to have a way... Here's an idea. What if the floating islands are made out of a certain material that the magic core sort of is like, oh, it's like a magnet where you know how if you take two magnets and you flip one the other way, then they repel each other. What if it's like that? The, the magic um, material is what's causing the, the islands to float. And so the, the people were like, um, what if we take this material and put it onto a boat? And then that's how they do it. So the planet has gravity, which is how people stay on the island, but the islands are being repelled because of their material. Yes, that's exactly how it works. And then that, that actually gives it a good way to explain it. Like, that that's a logical line of reasoning. It's not like, oh, it's magic and the islands are just floating. There's actual properties that go into it, and that's the stuff that I like. So I guess if it was the roots, like the roots, it could be some kind of wood that's repelling, and then the boat is just made out of that wood. The problem is... How would the, the boat move? Well, maybe that's where the, the wind users come into play, because it, all it takes is just like one little push, like one little stream of, of air and they get going. It's like space, like just a little bit of movement and you could go on forever. Maybe it's like that. Or yeah, magical dragon. That could work too. Like there's a dragon out in front pulling the boat. That could also explain it. Maybe there's, maybe, you know how like there's a bunch of different airline services here, like there's Southwest and there's, um, I don't know the other ones. Um, you, it could be like that. Like some, they all use the same boat material, but you know the boats could be made differently, and some could be dragon propelled, the others could be you know wind propelled, something like that. You know, just a little fun there. Not really. Not, it's not like it would impact the story very much, but Dragon Airlines, yeah. <laughs> and I guess would that mean that if you made like clothes out of the material that allows the islands to float? Does that mean that you could just walk? That's interesting, but I feel like that could be dangerous. So you'd want to be a wind user to manipulate air so that you could like actually move yourself. I don't know. And then what happens if you fall into the void? I'm thinking if you fall, you die. <laughs> well, I guess, I don't know. This is so weird. We would just have to come up with like a law where it would just be like, all things float at the same level. Maybe. Like maybe it's like, this green stuff here this is the magic material and so it all floats at the same level the stuff on top of it it doesn't matter how heavy it is you only need a certain amount to make stuff float so it's like this green stuff could be here but that would mean that the boat everything fall like floats at the same level which would mean that you'd have to have some sort of staircase to get up and down you fall for eternity no that doesn't make sense because if this is just a big water ball Okay, we can come back to the specific later. I just wanted to confirm that if we were doing a, a floating world, <laughs> that's all I wanted to do. So this next segment's going to sort of be talking about the different kind of islands and sort of what we want each a different island to be like. So, they DJ or Double J made this map. And basically, the reason I bring this up is because... They have different regions, right? They have a wind region, a water region, space region, and these are just like stereo, like um, not stereotypical, but like hypothetical, uh, like power or magic sections. Not saying that these are the magic sections. These are just examples. This is all just a big example. So, imagining that these are the floating islands, right? Do we want the king to have his own floating island? Where he has his capital, and it's like the, the capital of the world. It's like the hot spot it's like where the biggest city lives and the king is there i think the king should live in the biggest city of of the floating islands and that's like the place like if you want to be a big business person that's where you go and then we have different regions out here so this brings up the question is does each different island have a certain race that mainly inhabits it or 
is it random or is it depending on sort of like the type of magic wielder you are which would be interesting because if if you have if you have parents right one parent they might not both be fire users you might have a have a water parent and a fire parent right so if you're bored into the water first of all why are your parents both in water for example and then if you're born with fire are you going to move out to go to the fire that sort of is the question i have with the the um that or maybe it's just like a taboo to you know marry somebody who has the a different kind of magic power than you do so maybe the islands are just mixed there is no there's no uh is that what i i think that's what a lot of people are saying it's just random just random floating islands with different cities although each island i feel like should have a name well i mean obviously each island is going to have a name because it's like different continents okay I, we're just doing random then it, it'll just be random islands but like for example if this island is called europe for example we're just gonna go with europe um if this island is named europe it should be known for something you know like it shouldn't just be like oh that's the island of europe it's the same as every other island each island should be known for something like maybe one island is known for its you know famous pizza or something i don't know maybe that's just me now this next segment is going to be over how many different islands there actually are in the world and sort of who governs each of those islands let's decide on the number of islands there are in this world how many how many of these floating things are there in the world i'm talking about the main island so nine i'm seeing nine as a pretty consistent number between five and nine is what i'm seeing I think nine islands is pretty good. That's a pretty good number, I think. Nine big islands. One of those you have to remember is the King's Island. So then there would be eight separate islands. So there could be the main king, and he's the owner of all the islands, especially his, but then there's eight other people who govern each other island. All right, I like nine. I think we're gonna go with nine. Yeah, the biggest island's the King's Island. So I would think the main island we're gonna be sticking on for this um, series would be the King's Island. Because everything that happens in the world is basically on the King's Island. All these other islands, I would imagine, are more of just like living places. And then like, you know, just like typical places where it's like, oh, I'm living here, having a good life. King's Island is where all the businesses are, like all the big businesses and like the main corporation headquarters stuff. It's where the king lives. It's where all the knights live, sort of. I mean, the knights, they, it's where they live, but they would knights would be sent out to other regions to protect those regions. And I mean, I guess if all the different regions are like governed by a different king, then they could have different knights there. I don't know. Okay, there's, for those outside the U.S., you might not get this. I, I don't know how, how well it would connect. But in the U.S., there's, like, the federal government, and then each state has its own government. And so there's certain laws. There's certain federal laws where every single state has to follow it no matter what. And then there's certain state laws. So do we want to incorporate it to where the king makes all the laws? Or do some of the laws depend on... The different like, continents or the different islands that they live on the uh each island having different laws so the king should make like the main laws that makes sense but there should be some laws where each of the different so it would just basically be like like the united states where it's like it is one united states it is one country it's just there's different states in that country. That's basically what it is. Okay, I think that makes it pretty easy to understand. Next, we got a quick little segment here discussing the moons of the world. Yeah, okay, three is winning. I'm pretty sure that's what we're gonna go with. Okay, there are three moons. Here we go. <laughs> we got our three moons. 
I don't know how it works. I don't know. There would be some sort of... Well, you'd have to come up with some way. You know, maybe one of them's like... Like, uh... This? Oh, wait. Where'd the moons go? Here they are. You know, maybe one's like this. We got the uh, assassination classroom moon. You know. Maybe one of them's something like that. I don't know. Sub moons. Yeah, the, the smaller moon could be a sub moon of this. Like this. That could be a thing. Is there... Maybe that is the best way to explain it. There's one main moon and two sub moons. The magic comes from the main moon. These other moons are just here. I think that's that's probably the best way to explain it, actually. Do we like that idea? Finally, this last segment is about the different races in the world, as well as sort of maybe the bad guys of the world. So go check it out. Do we want goblins like this? Here's a goblin. Here's the thing with goblins, right? In the, um... In D&D, they have a negative connotation. And I guess really just in all fantasy genres, they feel like they're the bad guys. And they're not really, like, they're associated with causing trouble and stuff like that. So, I, I would think in order to combat this, we would have to take our own turn on goblins and sort of, like, just have them be the race that's... Like, they have green skin, and they're smaller. I'm seeing a lot of no's, but I'm also seeing a good amount of yeses. Uh, there should still be negatively viewed races. Well, mm, I don't know how that would work. Because, like, you would think that there would be fighting. Like, if, if goblins are a more negatively viewed race, one... That's sort of like, aren't we trying to, to uh, not have too much race discrimination? Two, isn't there going to be a lot of fighting? Like, we want more of a P... Well, actually, here's the thing. They had to be fighting a, against something. Actually, that brings up a good point. This brings up a good point. Okay, let's, let's put a pause on this right now. What are they fighting against? Right, there's knights. Sure, there's guards too, but what are they fighting against? They right now they're they're not fighting against anything. There's no reason for them to learn magic. There's no reason for there to be knights. Sure, there's gonna be some bandits, so then guards would be necessary. But ultimately, if you just have like bandits every once in a while, there's no reason to learn magic. So Knights are used for quests against magic beasts. So what if there was, you know how we have nine islands? What if like three of those islands, for example, were uninhabited? They are, there are a bunch of just magic beasts, goblins, all those like more negative connotation characters. And they can see, they can somehow find their way over. Like maybe there's like a, like a higher race. Maybe there's like a more demon-y type race where they have found out how to make boats, so they go ambush the main islands. So that's why they have guards, and that's why people learn magic, so that if goblins, say for example, come and attack the main islands, they have a way to fight, fight off those characters, those creatures. Hidden islands. That's a good idea. Like, people in schools are taught that there's only, you know, like five islands, for example, when there's actually a total of nine main islands, and just four of those are. Okay. I'm thinking that's what we're gonna go with. Which means that we can include goblins, because we're gonna need those guys. Because they're gonna be a... a more smart race, I would think. Because we do need a good amount of different magical creatures to inhabit these beast worlds, or these beast islands. Uh... Lizard folk, I'm pretty sure we're gonna want lizard people. So, I've seen vampires, however, I think a more interesting one would be demons. Demons of some kind? 
Except not super OP demons. Like, maybe it's just people. Like, demons are like people. Just... They have... Like, advanced things. Like this. Izuko. I watched that one recently. Or, this is a good one, actually. Oh, that's big. Maybe something like this. Where it's like, they have horns. So they look like humans. They're just, they have horns and they have maybe regenerative properties. Okay, I like this for the being the main race in which like, they're the people who have found out how to create the flying ships and how to get over to the main islands. Dark elves? There, you could, we could do something with dark elves. They could be pirates, sort of, yeah, like pirates. But yeah, that was all for this stream. Just a reminder, next stream is going to be on Xavier, so make sure you go check that one out in next Sunday, this upcoming Sunday. Uh, I try to stream every single Sunday, 1.30 p.m. EST to 3.30 p.m. EST. Same time, same day, every week. Try to make it, uh, unless if I change it, but it's pretty much the same time every week, so you know, really try to make it because it's a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. If you enjoyed, you can leave a like and subscribe for more content similar to this, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.